Let's move on to this question. Uh, that will be a graph question. So the function f, where f of x is equal to a sin x plus b, this is my function of f of x. It is defined for the domain, which means for the x values, domain is x values, between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, given to you. Now given that f of half pi, now again, if you don't like to work with pi, you can always convert to degrees, and then convert back to a pi as well afterwards. Anyways, let me just explain that. Pi is actually 180 degrees, and half pi is what? Half pi will be 90 degrees. Now here, 3 over 2 pi is what? 3 over 2 times 180, that will be 270. So 3 over 2 pi, that will be 270 degrees. Now it's, it is up to you if you like working with, with radians, you can do that. If you like working with degrees, you can do that. But afterwards, you have to convert back so you know that it is relevant to the question. So we're given these two values that we can use to find the value of a and b for part one. So let's use that. So we're given f of x is equal to a sine x plus the value of b. Right. Now we have f of half pi is equal to the value of 2. But let me replace it first. That will be a sine of half pi plus b equal to the value of, of 2. Let's simplify. What is the value of sine 90? That will be 1. So we have a times 1 plus b is equal to 2. That will be a plus b is equal to the value of 2. That is my equation number 1 from the given values. Now let's move on to this one. Here we have f of 3 over 2 pi is equal to same thing, same steps. We have a sine of 3 over 2 pi plus b. That will be the value of minus 8. Right. That will be a sine of 270. That will be minus 1. Plus b. That will be minus 8. So let's have a look. That will be uh, minus a plus b. That will be minus 8. And we can make b become the subject, so b will be a minus b. That is my equation number 2. So as you can see, we have two equations involving two unknown values, so we can use the simultaneous equation to solve uh, this equation, these equations to find the values of a and b. So here we have b already. Replace this b by this b. You will have a plus b, that will be a minus 8, that will be the value of 2. So you will have 2a is equal to the value of 10. So a obviously will be the value of 5. That is my first value of a. Now replace this back in this one, you will have to find the value of b. So that will be 5 minus 8, that will be minus 3. So here we go. a will be 5 and b will be the value of minus 3. Okay, so these will be the two values that we need to find for this question. Again, the main idea here is pretty easy, is that we have to use the given values and the equation that we have to solve one by one and then finding the values of a and b. So the main concept is everything you need is given to you, you just have to find a way to find the answer. Now for part two of the question. So find the values of x for which f of x equal to zero uh, given, given your values in radians correct to two decimal place. So pretty easy. Now we know exactly what f of x is, right? Because we just solved the equation, we know what we have. So f of x was found to be a is 5 sine of x plus b, b is minus 3. So now we have to solve for the values of x when f of x is equal to 0. So let's replace this. f of x is 5 sine x minus 3 is equal to 0. Now, which means sine of x is equal to 3 over 5. Now, we can always simplify this to decimal. Uh, 3 divided by 5 will be 0 0.6. Right, so we have sine of x is equal to 0 0.6. Now, finally, when sine is positive, we have to know that it is in what quadrant, in which quadrants? It will be in the A, because it is positive, right? A. S, T, C, 
S stands for sine, so you will be in the sine quadrant, second quadrant. It will be also this angle. This is simply your value of x, and this will be 180 minus x. Because here we have to work with radians, that will be pi minus x. Okay? Let's first find the value of x. So x will be simply, because here we have positive values, that will be directly sine inverse of 0 0.6. In terms of radians, obviously, that's what we have to find here. That will be 0 0.6435. 0 0.6435. And then we have to find the other angle, the big one, that will be pi minus answer. That should be 2.498. Now, this is not your final answer because here you can see there's a requirement, correct, to two decimal places. We have to change that. That will be what? That will be, um, so x have to be 0 0.64 and then 2.50 to two decimal places. Okay, so that will be your question, part two, that we have over here. Now for part three, we have to sketch the graph y equal to f of x. So again, whenever you have to sketch the graph, I would always advise to use a table of values. It would just make your life much simpler. You have just to use a table, which involves, let me uh, write this down first. Let me first make the table that I have to make before I do this. So I have my equation, which is given to me by, this is my equation f of x, which is given to you by a is what? a is 5 sine of x minus 3. Now, obviously, through practice and experience, you guys have to know that the value in front of your function here, of your of your sine function, this has to be your amplitude. And this is usually, we have to use that value here, which is one for your period. And this one is definitely your intercept. So let's see what are the values that we can have for my table of values. Now, I think this is the easiest way because we don't really have to think much. We just have to make a table and then just proceed one by one, finding the points and then sketching. So we know that here, it is defined between 0 and 2 pi. So let me make the table. So we have x values and we have to find the corresponding y values. O f of f of x is y. Right. Begin from 0. Now what is the interval I will be using? Because the value here in front of my x is 1, I'll be using 90 degrees divided by this value that is 1. It will be 90. 90 is pi by 2. Pi by 2. Then increase by pi by 2, that will be pi and then 3 pi by 2, and finally that will be 2 pi. So this is how I find my interval, because I want to work with exact values. There's, there's only one reason behind this. Why do I do this? Is because I want to work with exact values. And to find this exact values interval, I look at the value in front of my x, it is 1. So I take 90 divided by 1, give me 90. So I know the interval I will be working with will be 90. In that case, that will be giving me exact values. That is the only reason. So, when x is equal to 0, what will that give me? So let's replace 5 sine 0 minus 3. That will be minus 3 as my value of f of x. Now next one, when x is equal to pi by 2, we have seen this before, it is given to you by, by 2, right here. And when sine is equal to what? Sine is equal to, so 5 sine of pi minus 3, that will be minus 3. And then pi over 2, we know this is minus 8. So minus 8, and then 2 pi, let's replace. That will be uh, 5 sine of 2 pi minus 3, that should be minus 3. Okay, so we can see these are the values that we have for our table. Let me just draw this here. So we have the y-axis. We have, uh, as you can see, we have minus 8, which is kind of down. Let me just put my x a bit up so it can be kind of proportional to what I want to show. This is my x value and my y value. So let me mark this as this is zero. Let's say this is my first value here is uh, pi by two. Then we have pi, then we have three pi by two. And then finally we have two pi. Again, this is only a sketch. It doesn't need to be exact. You can always uh, try your best using a ruler as well to help you out, but it doesn't need to be exact. Now for the first value, uh, 0 will be minus 3. Let's say minus 3 is somewhere uh, over here. 
0 minus 3, let's say it is here, minus 3. Why not? Then we have, uh, this will be 2, so let's say 2 is somewhere over here, why not? And then we have pi will be minus 3, minus 3 let's say somewhere over here. Then we have this will be minus 8, let's say minus 8 will be definitely below, let's say somewhere over here, right? And then we have this will be back again to minus 3, let's say minus 3 will be somewhere over here. As you can see, we have the whole graph ready or available for us to connect. This will be the max point, this will be the minimum point, and this will be joining to this one, and this will join to this one. Okay, try your best to have a shape somewhat like this. Okay, so this will be your sketch for your graph. And at the end, always label your graph as y equal to f of x. Or if you want to, you can always write 5 sine of x minus 3. So what did we learn here? We learned that for the first part, we have to use the given values to find the unknown. That's the, the, that's the only way. Using the given values to find the unknown first. And then here we have to solve this equation. So we proceed step by step by solving the equation. First thing we have to make sine become the subject. And then we see it is a positive value. If it is a positive value, it will be in my first quadrant and in my second quadrant, right? Then we solve, we find the values correct to two decimal place. Great. Now for part three, we have to sketch the graph. Now to sketch a graph, there's of course many ways and to do that in this, but this is my easiest way that I think I would advise to everyone. Just choose a table of values to find the value that we need, and then we can just sketch the graph. There's always steps to follow. First, we can look at the amplitude if you want to, or we have to look at this to find the interval that we need so that we have exact values to work with, and then proceed with connecting the dots, forming a smooth curve. At the end, label your graph as follows for your full marks. And this will be a question involving graphs and trigonometry.